Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Royal Oak Comics Party. I'm Kevin Eckert, and this is Mike Burridge, and we're here with Matthew Daher. Artist, musician, dance instructor. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? No, that is, that is not true. Oh, okay. Well, you teach music. I teach, I teach music. I teach music. Dance is something that I got into relatively recently through working with dancers that I have gotten into in terms of a little bit of performance, but not really anything that's been like full blown, like, oh, I'm just, you know, well, actually, that's not even true. I've done a couple kind of like improv things where I've gotten into performance as a dancer, but mostly it's been somehow involved in like improv, like some kind of improvised music setting, too. Okay. So, so what do you, so when you're teaching, what are you teaching? Are you teaching like how to play instruments or what is it? Yeah, well, I teach private lessons, um, and for that, it's, it's mostly piano students, just because there are more piano students. I'm always really excited to get new drum students because that's also my... the easiest instrument, right? The piano, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> you like just pick that up in a weekend. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of, it's kind of like Garage Band. It's like you can hop on it for like two weeks and just like feel feel like a master. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I teach private lessons. Um, really, like I said, I really like teaching drum lessons because that's my main instrument. But I also um, I work for. Well, I shouldn't say four, but through Living Arts. Um, and I kind of do an arts-infused education thing in a middle school in Southwest. Um, so that's kind of teaching music and math at the same time. And, like, kind of trying not to let the kids know that I'm also trying to teach them math because then they get really They get angry. mad. They get really, yeah, they get really pissed they off. They start breaking the guitars <laughs> exactly. and stuff. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you have, um, you have an EP coming out, and yeah. it's part of, like... You're releasing it as this humongous project, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this yeah. like yeah. gigantic thing. Uh, I'm working on a film that's going to go along with the performance, and so is Natasha and a mm -hmm. bunch, bunch of other uh, video artists. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about the event and like how you came up with the idea to have this gigantic yeah, thing? Yeah, for sure. Well, the, the EP itself, um, it's a project that I've been working on for... It's kind of hard to actually put a date on it. I've been kind of saying four years because that's kind of when, like, these compositions really, I started to think of them all as sort of one, you know, like they're going to all come out in one release. Um, and I finished it kind of over the summer and the fall. And, you know, I wanted to put it out. I want to have a release show. But I didn't – it's not – it's really a studio project, and it's not the kind of thing that – I was trying to put like a band together just to kind of approximate a bunch of sounds that were really kind of crafted in the studio just for the sake of having, I don't know, it just didn't, I've kind of gone down that road before and I just didn't want to do it again. But I mean, at that point, it's like I've been doing more and more multimedia collaborations, working with video artists, working with dancers. So at the time, it just kind of made sense to say, well, um, how about take the music, you know, just kind of put together a big project. With people who I've been working with, I ended up getting um, other, some other folks involved as well um, and kind of make it into like a big multimedia performance. Kind of really, it's kind of really bringing together like all the different mediums that I've worked with and a lot of the different people that I've worked with over the past couple of years. It almost, I don't know, it almost feels like kind of like a bit of a, a like thesis performance for like my time in Detroit so far, which is kind of, kind of cool. So yeah, cool. Well, how, how has it been working with that many people? Like I've... I think it's very hard to work with a bunch of different people yeah, yeah, at the yeah. same time. Like, and you know, I I think all of the people who are involved in this project, they're just involved with it because it's something they really like to mm -hmm. do, right? And For sure. How most how definitely is, have you had to like cut anybody off yet? No, <laughs> no, no. I haven't had to do that. No, I mean it's a lot. the The beginning of the process was kind of it was a strange emotional space to be in. Just because I had just finished it and it was like this was my baby that like just thousands of hours had gone into. So, and this is the first time, like the first couple of meetings with the video artists and with the dancers, it was kind of like I'm putting my newborn child into like, you know, you guys aren't strangers. But it felt like I'm putting the, the, it into like a stranger's hands and like, you know, just really, <laughs> I was like really kind of protective and like kind of neurotic at first. But then. What was kind of good was that the process of um, working with everybody has kind of caused me to sort of just, you know, let it go more and kind of adjust to the idea of kind of putting it out there and like letting it kind of inspire, um, yeah, inspire other narratives or other um, ideas 
from the people I've been working with, which has been great, which has been super rewarding, kind of helped me see things in it that I never would have seen, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it is, it is a lot of different personalities. And um, What's the best personality? <laughs> <laughs> Who has the best personality? All the, it, ca all the cancers. <laughs> all the cancers. All the cancers and... Maybe the cancer Leo cuspers too. <laughs> <laughs> the cuspers. No, actually, it's it's funny. I really um. There have definitely been times where I've kind of stopped and taken serious inventory of like the astrological signs of the people who, <laughs> who I work with. But it just occurred to me that I haven't done that at all with this project. I haven't stopped to say like, okay, which elements are we lacking here? Which element would <laughs> what do we need? Do you more do of? that normally? Not, well, not, it's just happened sometimes. Like, there's a, um, a group I played with uh, when I was in Montreal. I was living in Montreal uh, called the Rusty Horse Band. And I was living with three of my band members and three of my really close friends. At a certain point, we were all having practice one day, and we said, holy shit, wait a second. We have all the elements here. We have a water sign. We have a fire sign. We have an earth sign and an air sign. <laughs> like, well, now... Now I'm wondering how you picked, like, me and Natasha, where you, you, like, cut the ends of your fingertips and just dripping blood all over a bunch of, like, Facebook pages, or what? How did, you, how did this happen? Something like that. It's more, it's more complicated than that. I don't really want to go oh, into okay. it. Oh, okay, you here, cut but... both of your hands. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I, I don't know. I really, I think that I kind of... I th I think that I um I kind of have a strength for being like diplomatic and kind of navigating um just navigating just kind of like interactions with a lot of different personalities. So and I kind of really I don't know there's kind of a certain pleasure that I that I've always gotten out of, you know, like in um like in band practices when I would play in different bands and stuff. I always kind of like found pleasure in kind of like finding the compromise like creatively, artistically, like and like in other disputes to and kind of being a bit of a peacemaker and a bit of a, like a diplomat so I think that I know I kind of like being sort of a point person between a lot of different people um and just kind of like bringing those different perspectives together and kind of trying to find a way to make them work and make sure that you know everyone's kind of getting their voice which is there's been a lot of that you know recently because you know as you know all the video um projects like everyone's been kind of like getting close to their final drafts and all that mm -hmm. so there's been a lot of push and pull in terms of like okay this is kind of my vision of what it was but like this is the person that this you know the narrative that this person established so you know kind of trying to find that that space where it's like everybody feels like they're really getting something out of out of the collaboration yeah. you know well i think you're doing a good job at that what okay, can you trying. tell us about any of the other um I mean, I know what mine is about, but can you tell us about any of the the, the visuals that any of the other artists are putting together? Um, you mean in terms of like their in narratives that that went into them? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I um, think. Well, one of them, like the one that my roommate uh, and good friend and collaborator on this project, Costa Sir Dennis, is putting together. Um, that one is very much like some some of the videos are very are much more abstract. Some of them kind of, you know, the artists more brought their own narrative into it. Like uh, I know Natasha's video, she kind of came up with her own narrative that kind of, in a weird in a sort of creepy way, like totally ties into, you know, meanings that that particular piece has for me. That you know I don't even think she like intended to do, but it just kind of worked out that way. Um, but yeah, the video that Costa is putting together follows kind of more the narrative of the piece, um, which is called Hang Over, Hang On, which is a collaboration between me and um, my good friend in Montreal, a really amazing vocalist named Emma Frank. And um, that one is really... Um, that piece is about really kind of like fear of loss in a romantic sense and just kind of like, I don't know, just being kind of being romantically entangled in someone and constantly being faced with the possibility of just kind of like that just falling out from under you, you know, mm -hmm. um, is I guess is kind of the briefer way to put it. But um, yeah, he kind of he did a he did a really great job, I think, um, or is doing a really great job uh, kind of taking that narrative as inspiration, but then also sort of creating more of there's definitely sort of a narrative to what he's putting together, 
but it's turning out to be a little bit more like montagey and um, you know, we got the dancers who are actually going to be performing for that piece involved in a lot of the footage that he took as well. Oh, so they'll be in the live show and on the exactly, video? Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, no, that one, that one, that piece in particular, I think was probably pretty challenging to try to tackle. It's like pretty long. There are a lot of different sections and just like a lot of different elements to be taking into account. And um, I'm really excited to see what his, what his you know, final product is going to look like because I think there's a lot that he's kind of trying to, like, work into this one piece, you know? Yeah. So. Mike, have you ever done a project that involved, like, a bazillion people all um, working on it, like, different kind of artists? and? I'm such, like, an isolationist, and I don't, like, <laughs> play well with others. So I'm trying to think. Even when we did, like, the big documentary, like, it was just three people at the wheel, and yeah. everybody well, else was just kind of in it. What was the big documentary? Uh, it was called Another Discourse on Method, and it was kind of, it was like interviews with philosophers and mathematicians and academics, kind of like people on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Thinking the big thoughts and doing, you know, <laughs> stuff. We went back and interviewed, like, our old, like, high school debate teacher, because he was, <laughs> like, awesome. he was teaching high school, but his, his, like, degrees and thoughts and ideas went way beyond. Yeah, yeah, for that. sure. But it was just kind of about how language works and kind mm -hmm. of how... It was just a bunch of smarty pants talking, but we nice. managed to, like, kind of form it into a pleasant film about, mm -hmm. like... It was supposed to be motivational to, like, you know, I should read a book now. Yeah, or I should yeah, go get sure. my, finish that degree I started. Uh -huh. But it was... It was ambitious of us, especially since this is the days of, like, we were shooting on DV. It was before, like, SD cards yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but at the end of the day, it was me and two other people who were, like, doing all the stuff and setting it up. So, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like there's got to be something. Like doing Ultra Megas, right? That's yeah. wrangling people. They're setting up big shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I try yeah, to I minimize know. my involvement and stuff. It's like, <laughs> well, I'll design, the, I'll design the flyer and I'll print the flyer. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to hand out the flyer. Well, yeah. that's, that's totally the way to do yeah. collaborating with well, that no, many people is, like, you have to say, like, okay, this slice is what you're responsible yeah, for. that's true. Which I think, like, anything that goes well that involves a lot of people ha has that kind of clearly mm -hmm. delineated. And I, I, think that, I think that for me in this project, that's kind of a lesson that I've been, that I've been kind of really working through, too. Because I think when I go into these kinds of things, I just go into it with the, like, I don't know, it's kind of this weird combination of um, guilt. Kind of guilt with, like, I don't want to put too much on other people's shoulders kind of thing. You know? It's like I don't want to... Oh, because I know it's like everybody else is super busy with all this, all this, all this other stuff. So it kind of... Um, yeah, at times it's this sort of thing where it's kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to do this and this and this. And it's like as much as I can, like, physically handle without <laughs> collapsing, you know? Um yeah, but then kind of, I feel like, especially throughout this process, I've I've definitely, you know, reorganized my idea of what different people's responsibilities were going to be and kind of had to take a few moments to sort of be like, all right, you just need, these are the things that you need to do right now and you need to let this other stuff go or, like, find someone else to do it. And also just kind of remember that all, all I really need to do is just, like, show up to it, you know? That's what it really mm -hmm. comes down to, to for me. That's kind of been my mantra throughout this entire thing is, like, oh, there's this whole list of stuff that I need to do, but then it's kind of like, okay, so you're here, so just pick one and just and just do it, you know? Are you the kind like, of person where you like to be in control of everything because you know that all the parts that you say, this is my part, I'm going to do this part, you know that part's going to get done right? Yeah. Because that's how I get yeah. sometimes. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that for sure. And it's not it's not so much in terms of like an ownership thing, like so that I can like say that I did these things, but it's mm -hmm. more just kind of like yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a trust thing. But again, I think that's what this whole process has been um a really good learning experience for me in terms of kind of saying, Okay, there's so many different elements that I'm putting in other people's hands, like creatively, you know, whatever. And I think a kind of big moment for me was when I actually finished the mastering process with my I wasn't mastering it. There's a um, 
uh, an engineer named Ruben Ghost, I think is his name. That's the first time I've ever said it out loud. Ruben's Ghost. <laughs> Ruben, Ruben Ghost, who was mastering it. And as soon as he was done, as soon as we were done with that process, it was like suddenly I was a million times less stressed out and realized that so, you know, what I thought was stressed out surrounding the whole project was really more about the fact that something that is like unquestionably my responsibility was now finished. And then it was kind of like, okay, I know that all these other, all these other hands are kind of in this. So, you know, people are going to do their thing. I'm going to fuck something up. Someone else is going to screw something up. It's going to be, and it's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be cool. That, that description makes me uncomfortable even to just hear it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like that has to be part of like the grand artistic vision is like, the participation of others and others mm -hmm. contributing their thing to be superimposed on your, you know, kind of big work mm -hmm. where I just, I never see that in my, for, for in my own stuff, like the, the grand artistic vision is always something that I have conceived of from beginning to end and tightly controlled mm -hmm. every aspect. But I think it's a, you know, it's a, a, what would you call it? Like it's a big boy kind of trait where you can work with others and like let it, Kind of mm -hmm. let it go, let sure. the baby be held by somebody for else sure. for a little while. For sure, but I think I think a big part of that is the fact that everything that you were just describing, as far as the music itself goes, mm -hmm. that's like absolutely how it's been for me the entire you know the entire time. Like the, <laughs> it was funny, the mastering engineer. Um, I found out that I I tripled his record for revisions. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, he was really. I mean, and that's this isn't even totally true because I there are some musical collaborations on the album itself too. Um, but in terms of like the production, like this was just kind of like hours and hour, hours and hours and hours of just like meticulous, just like moving things up and down like a decibel here and there, and you know. Um, I think part of the reason why I ultimately have been able to kind of like put all these other elements in other people's hands is because I feel so strongly about the music mm -hmm. and I know that it's such a solid foundation that no matter what else is happening, it's, so, it's you know, that's going to anchor whatever is going on. You know what I Definitely. mean? And that's not to say like, oh, like. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe Kevin's video is going to be shitty, but it doesn't matter. It's like you maybe, know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. And that's the and that's the thing too. We were talking before we came in here about how it's like they're literally like n these elements, like the video, the dance, are not all going to come together in the same place in full until like the actual performance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, which is a little bit nerve wracking, but again, it's like because everything is built around this anchor, built like around mm -hmm. the music itself, which I know kind of like the architecture is all like super firm and strong foundation. You know, I just kind of have faith that it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work because it's like everything is, you know, kind of orbits around that. So. I'm excited. Cool. To, I don't know. That's a good way to look at it. I was going to say, I'm excited to see how it turns out, but I have another commitment that night. So oh, I'm yeah? excited to hear the tale of yeah. how it turns out. <laughs> Yeah, that is a night when many things are going on on yeah, the same which night. which is, I don't think we mentioned, it's Friday, February 13th at yes, MOCAD. it is. Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, En Vogue is playing that night. I know that... Uh, where are they playing? I don't, I don't know where they're playing, but... Playing at MoCAD. At MoCAD. Vogue. <laughs> MoCAD. <Mocad. laughs> they're the dancers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I had, I had um, you know, I've been kind of out and about talking to a lot of people about it the last couple of weeks, and... Um, you know, there have been like various things where people have been like, oh, I'm going to be out of town or there's this and that. And I had one friend who was like, oh, I'm going to try to make your show end in Vogue. And I was like, oh, why didn't I look at this first? <laughs> I mean, my, my options were Valentine's Day, the 13th or the 12th. And I figured, you know, I don't want to do it on a Thursday. I don't want, obviously don't want to do it on Valentine's Day. I guess the 13th, you know, um, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of half kidding. I don't, I don't think, I don't think. I, I'm gonna have a lot of friends who are, you know, going to end, who are gonna be torn between going to En Vogue and and this performance. Never Although, know. I mean, when I think about it, it's actually in terms of the music, it's actually not that far off for some of the tracks in terms of like the uh, <laughs> in terms of the demographic. It definitely, some of them definitely have a sort of in a sort of twisted way, a kind of like '90s R&B vibe to them. So <laughs> that is the it's gonna it's the most competitive night of the <laughs> yeah. of the winter so far. I like, think so. There There's hasn't... so many other shows. Yeah. But then also, like, 
Nick's trying to engineer like the after party for every show is going to be at the same place, and it's going to be. Where's that going to be? I like this idea. I don't know if it's going to be at his house or what, but I I think there's going to be like a big time. Like all the people who are doing their cool things around town at different places that night are going to funnel into like a giant gang and become like (laughs) the late night party boys. I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know who Nick is. Oh, Nick is my brother. Who his band is playing that night. Gotcha. Also, gotcha. (laughs) I hope. I think what should happen is that whatever performances are happening should all have encore performances at that after party. Yes. I think yes. that's what should that happen. That would be super cool. That yeah. would be cool. At the same time, because we don't have time to do them all like chronologically. <laughs> it would be like the ultra mashup, as long as everybody plays kind of at the same tempo. Yeah, for sure. And everyone can transpose <laughs> their keys to kind of like match up. <laughs> that sounds good to me. But I haven't heard much of your music, but today, earlier, I... Got to hear a little snippet part, I think, on SoundCloud. And yeah, yeah. The the was it drip drown? The could very well have been. Yeah, I mean, I I released one track from the EP okay. a couple days ago, so that I think I think then that was it would probably, probably be if it was something that wasn't from the EP. But it had kind but. of cool, like almost off kilter drum things. Are you playing live drums, or were they chopped up? Because they seemed a little chopped. It's a mix of both. Oh, cool. So it's actually it's a mix of both. There's um that pattern that you're thinking of. It's like I recorded myself doing a pattern like on hi hat and kick drum, mm-hmm. um, but then there are also um, samples that are in there as well. And then in addition to that, there are multiple kind of layers of my drums where it's like you have. Um, I know I'm getting kind of going to start to talk shop a little bit. We have one layer that's kind of like filter a bit and further in the background. Mm-hmm. Then you have another layer that has a gate on it, so it's just kind of like the louder hi hat hits are kind of like jumping even more forward to kind of exaggerate the dynamics of it. So, um, yeah, I mean, a lot, the entire EP, it's like very much a lot of different approaches. It's like a lot of it is recorded instruments, um, some MIDI, some synth, some found sounds. Um, So kind of all over the place, just kind of trying to like blend it all together, you know? So Matt, can you tell us some of the places that you found (laughs) some of your sounds? Um, let's see. Oh man, this is going back because some of these were from a really long time ago. Um, you know, I, I try to carry around a recorder with me as much as I can. So it's just kind of like, um, wherever I'm at, I can catch something that catches my ear. Um, you know, sometimes it's just waiting for, like actually the opening of Shift, um, the track that you're working on a video for. Um, there's a percussion layer that's just, I was waiting, I was picking up a friend and um, I was kind of playing a rhythm that was in my head on the steering wheel and I had my flashers going at the same time and just like the textures were working really well together so I just kind of pulled it out, grabbed it, put it back in. Um, The very end of the album, kind of bookend it, um, there's a kind of really weird texture that happens that's actually a recording of just kids playing in Central Park but pretty seriously processed in a way that sounds kind of terrifying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, where else? I don't know. It's a lot of household sounds, to be honest. Um, a lot of it is just kind of like just walking around in my bathrobe and just kind of like hearing a sound. Chainsaws. Never... <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, actually when the first, um, it's funny you say that because the first, um, when I was first starting to get into found sounds, the first field recording I ever made was a, uh, up at my stepmom's farm in Port Awesome where uh, we had to go up and chop down some branches from a dead apple tree. And I just hung a microphone in the tree as we were, um, as we were sawing it off. I ended up building an entire, like it was my first like electroacoustic piece, like just out of like the chainsaw samples using like resonators cool. and like, cause there's just so much frequency information in there that, um, yeah, there's kind of a lot to work with. That's cool. So did, did all your, uh, revisions and extensive like chopping up of everything that like when we started working on this the notes that you gave me as far as like what you were thinking about where certain things would happen in the video or Uh which uh which instruments or voices you wanted to kind of drive the motion of each scene Mm -hmm. in it did that help you generate that that set of notes or was it all just kind of like came out intuitively out of your head did did what did like having all of that experience with like building the track up? Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, I'm just to a nauseating degree. I'm just like so familiar with like all with all the layers that are happening. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that did. I think that did help. I mean, it's the kind of thing where, um, 
Yeah, it's like I, I guess yeah, I guess that's the simplest way I can put it. It's just that I know I know so well like what layers are happening when and just, um. Yeah, just just certain layers kind of jumped out at me more than others in terms of what could really what could um, relate to motion in an interesting way. There's an interesting thing to think about too, because you know you have. Like rhythm is an obvious thing that kind of in terms of like more uh, temporal uh, gestures, more temporal visual gestures, but also um, just kind of listening back through the tracks as I was um, as I was writing those out kind of got me thinking about frequency and EQs and just the way that that would relate to color in different ways. And those I wasn't for those sorts of notes, I really was at more of a loss for how to kind of like articulate the relationship. But I think I kind of was able to hint at it a little bit in certain spots maybe I don't those know, are maybe. the most detailed notes i've ever gotten on any project that i've worked on with anyone <laughs> this, this is this That's is good, this though. is a refrain that kind of keeps coming <laughs> 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 That's I think that's positive though, you know. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to tell everybody where they can go uh to watch this show when it's happening? Yeah, what yeah. Date? So the show is going to be at Mocad Museum of Contemporary Art Detroit uh on February 13th. That's a Friday, Friday the 13th. Um Yeah, the show is going to doors are going to be doors are going to open at 8. There's going to be dial sets by uh, Dial 81 before and after the show. Oh, the show itself will probably start at like nine or so. Cool. We um, can't say how much it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to have to show up and figure that out for yourself then. We can't say how much it is. <laughs> it's, it's not that much though. It's not that much. <laughs> Kevin's going to wave to you after you pay at the, <laughs> at the door with all, right. all the number of fingers I'll that are on I'll be outside the door going like this. <laughs> well... Thank you, everybody, for joining us on Royal Oak Comics Party. We hope to see you next time. And watch Picture Adventure if you want to watch more Comics Party. Okay. Okay. Bye.